Hello, hello, this is the Tesla Dad. I'm gonna give you a rundown of my first initial impressions about the Model S Plaid. And, you know, I'm just gonna switch it up here. Uh, my first impression, it's a beautiful car and um, I really like it. And, you know, the interior is quite a bit of an improvement from the older Model S. Um, one thing that I really thought was really useful was the cold seats that are now back. It was in my Model X as well, uh, but it was not actually that good at, at cooling you down. This car is actually good at cooling you down for those who get hot like me. Uh, the heated seats I've also had a chance to try out now too because it's been a little bit colder and the heated steering wheel. Very, very um, quick to get heated. Uh, and the older one was pretty quick at getting heated too. Um, I've got the easy sentry or easy entry mode here set up uh, for going in and out. Uh, the major difference in terms of keys is that you know your phone acts as a doubles as a key. You also get two key cards and two traditional fobs. I still like carrying the fob sometimes, especially for opening the trunk in front. You can do that easily. Um, the seats and the finish is way better. Uh, you can see here. I got already managed to make a mess. Uh, my kids are usually sitting back there. I've got the kick mats ins inserted because I don't want them to ruin things. My dog usually rests his chin on this beautiful um, little central compartment. I've got masks there because of COVID, but I'm sure I'll find more creative uses. I've got Logitech joysticks set up here. Uh, now this car comes with USB-C cable outlets and not the traditional USB anymore. So if you don't want to get everything new, you got to pick up something like this. Um, it's like a little USB-C dongle that gives you regular USB 3.0 ports um, if you want to use your old joysticks and stuff without repurchasing. The biggest improvement to the interior though, there's two things I think other than um, the screen is this here and this here. Um, before Tesla had you know these kind of two cup holder seats, standard standard cup holder sizes, and you had to kind of you know fiddle around with the armrest. This actually now hides. And before there was no compartment for your sunglasses and things like that. And now I've got a compartment for my sunglasses, uh, my asthma inhaler, and the uh, alcohol sanitizer. So this hides nicely. You don't have to buy anything uh, extra. And they got rid of those weird, you know, metal. I don't know, cup holder things that nobody uses and literally uh, is of no use. Um, the other thing is the magnetic two chargers that came with the car in the front here. And it actually does a very good job holding the phones. Uh, even when you use uh, plaid mode and even if uh, you use the drag strip mode, it seems to hold it in there. Although I haven't had to brake really hard, so I don't know if it'll hold if I you know, brake really hard, but certainly the acceleration doesn't matter. Um, the interface is very beautiful. I think the user interface has been improved quite a lot. And of course, if you look at the back seats, the kids also have their own screen now and they can control YouTube and Netflix from back there so they can watch whatever you want. And if you have a premium connectivity, you basically have you know, something that'll entertain your kids. You don't have to worry about downloading things in advance on an iPad. Uh, things like that, which I thought was really cool and my kids certainly are taking full use of now. Now, of course, what's on everyone's mind is the uh, yoke steering wheel. Okay, uh, yoke, not uh, like the egg yoke, but yoke, Y-O-K-E. Um, this here is the yoke steering wheel. Uh, I'm gonna be totally honest. Um, it only took me an hour to get used to it. Um, within two drives, I had it pretty much down. The one thing that took me a little bit longer to get used to is not the steering itself, but see the uh, horn button here? Um, you gotta kind of reach over. You can't just press like the middle or like you can't just press something on the side. You gotta be a little bit precise on there. The other buttons like the lights are touch sensitive as are the wiper buttons. So if you press down hard, you get the water coming out. If you press down lightly, it just uh, does the wiper blade. So a little bit, a few little nuances there. Um, you know, the Tesla delivery experience was really good. 
I, I was too excited, so I wasn't really listening to the guy, and I, I told him, you know what, I just want to start driving. Uh, so my tutorial was less than five minutes, but so, you know, some of this is my fault, but, uh, you know, it's the car is designed to be very intuitive, though, so you can kind of figure things out as you fumble along. And if you're really stuck, you can go to the owner's manual, which I've had to do once or twice. Uh, but it was a very easy, it's a very easy to use car otherwise. Um, I actually had a flat tire uh, within one week of getting the car. So I had to bring it to Tesla service and they took a flatbed. Just remember when you do get your car towed, you always has to be a flatbed for a Tesla. Um, you know, so don't get uh, regular traditional uh, towing. Uh, that's something to keep in mind as well. Tesla service was really good. Uh, they sent the tow truck to my house within under an hour. Uh, I thought that was really fast and expedient. And they were able to fix the tire within, uh, you know, two or three hours. Uh, and I think the whole bill was only $110, which is, you know, I thought fairly reasonable, especially uh, given all that they've done. The other interior changes, um, which are cool. And I'll show you on, on this passenger side here. This guy here is a um, button to get out of the car, in and out of the car. Um, there is still the thing that you can pull to get out. I don't know why it's so dirty here already, but you can pull this. That's a latch release, manual release, but if you press this button, like so, so it just um, actually pushes, the actuator actually pushes the car door out. Uh, so, you know, it's a little bit less effort, less, you know, obviously a little bit different from the Model X uh, where it just fully opens and closes for you. But this is, a, you know, definitely an improvement from my old Model S. Um, on the inside, the interior top two lights are similar. There's this like, you know, Eye of Sauron here, which looks at you uh, inside the car. Uh, and again, it's a compliance feature for the full self drive mode and the uh, driver assist uh, technologies that are in here. Now, I still haven't gotten the update uh, or the software uh, for them to judge if I'm worthy of getting full self drive. Um, I kind of don't want it to be honest just yet because, you know, I, I've actually heard some feedback that it's not as great as, you know, complete driverless full self drive yet. So I've, you know, purchased and enabled the full self drive. So it's right now a driver assist really. And uh, once they work out the kinks, maybe uh, I'd like to take it on when it's later. And I, I certainly don't want my driving judge for a whole week to drive like, you know, the most cautious person in the world just to, <laughs> when you have a fine, super fun car to drive. Um, the main dash is very um, much similar to the old one. Uh, I haven't quite figured out how to customize what's being displayed on the left side yet. Um, the energy bars are gone. The acceleration and deceleration, the regen, braking, it's actually showing on the bottom now as a green line when you're regenerating electricity going down a hill or something. Uh, whereas the right side, sh it shows a gray bar when you're accelerating and consuming energy. Now I'm charging the car uh, through a NEMA uh, outlet, just like uh, I always did. Uh, so I have a NEMA 1450. The um, 1415, uh, sorry, 1450 cable for the NEMA for the mobile connector, you've got to actually purchase separately for $55. Uh, you know, I, I, I understand they made that change a few years ago, but you know, I thought that was a little stingy to not include a $55 cable. Like it's like Apple with their adapters kind of thing. But anyhow, um, you can see the charging statistics there. So I charge this car at about 32 amps, which is pretty good. You get a uh, full charge. I think, you know, in terms of range, everyone's worried that the Plaid doesn't have as much range, but I was super impressed with the range. If you charge your battery to completely full, it's actually 650 kilometers. Um, you know, usually it's recommended you don't charge it to full, so I usually charge it to uh, 90%, uh, which gives me still like a good 560 kilometer range or so, uh, which means I'm actually uh, charging this car a lot less. And of course the screen here will show you how long you have left to charge and what you've charged. Um, if you're buying a repeat Tesla, um, obviously uh, it's good to get your own referral code. The referral program is apparently being phased out and it may already have actually expired, which is unfortunate, but you get 1500 kilometers of supercharging, uh, which is fairly decent. Now everything is done through the central console. The other question that a lot of people have is there's no gears or there's no little paddles to press on the steering wheel. And 
you know, that again took me actually zero drives to get used to. Switching it from the screen to drive and reverse is extremely easy. So I don't know if I showed you that there. You just basically move this up for drive and move this down for reverse. It's very easy. Um, the self park feature is also present. It's very easy as well. Uh, the summon works very well, <clears throat> but you know, it's uh, it, the summon feature is about the same as the older Model S. Um, the cameras seem to be a little bit uh, crisper, but it may be reflecting the screen. Um, this back mirror, I always found a little bit small on the Teslas and for both the Model X and the S, it's, it looks a little small and it's about still about the same size. This part, this little sun blocking thing has been a little bit improved. Uh, so you can see it there. I'm looking at myself. And, you know, the, li the lights up, uh, the lights do light up. I just haven't activated that option yet. But there's a protective cover I probably should take off. There we go. I still have some of the protective uh, wraps on. That's, uh, <laughs> you know, how, how little attention I pay attention. So I still have it on the main screen, but, you know, I, I actually like it because I think it protects the screen somewhat and I'm too lazy to get a screen protector for the time being. Um, let me show you the inside finish though. I'm gonna just turn the lights on by opening the door again. There we go. And you know what, maybe this light comes on too now. Okay, here we go. Hello. Okay. So, I, on inspection or picking up the car, the only thing I ex like ex inspected was the panel gaps. Um, this car had zero panel gaps and, you know, maybe I got lucky with a good one, uh, but, um, you know, I think most of them don't have panel gaps. One of my, my older Model S had a panel gap and the, the service center was able to fix it pretty easily. Here we go. Um, so the seat finish, I think is a heck of an improvement. Um, the mats, by the way, you need to buy new mats. Uh, if you're planning to use your winter mats from an older Model S, they don't fit anymore. They're, the, the configuration is a little bit different. The car interior is a little bit bigger, uh, both uh, width-wise and um, length-wise. Uh, so a little bit more room. I showed you the back seats already, but here it is with the light. And those are my car seats uh, for the kids that would have been transferred over uh, from the Model X uh, that I just uh, sold. Uh, this. The inside screen here on the back row, it's a little smaller than I was hoping, but it gets the job done and seems to really occupy the children. Um, I mentioned the USB-C connectors, not the USB anymore. Um, what else can I tell you? Oh, the front is a little bit slanted down, which is different from the previous two cars I've had. So there's a bit of a slant. The actual space is a little bit smaller too. So the front space has been, I don't know, for some reason abbreviated. I'll show you the trunk here. So we've got the trunk. It looks very similar in size and configuration to the older trunk. There's one new thing here. There's a little mesh for this little compartment. You've got the boot trunk too. And I put some, and I put a spare charging cable there and, um, and a roadside assistance kit. And, and I think one of my uh, you know, YouTube viewers, uh, who's also one of my Twitter followers, mentioned that um, you know, uh, it's probably a good idea to get a small little lithium ion battery that you can, where you can you know, jumpstart your own 12 volt if you need to, um, which is not a good idea, and I've, which is actually a very good idea in that, and I'm probably gonna do. I've been thinking that for a while. It's just the battery issue is very far, few and far between. So I wasn't sure if it was worth the investment, especially with Tesla service being at the fingertip. One unique change to the back row seat is the middle seat belt buckle is different from the other two. So if you have like a dog, for example, and you like using a dog seat belt like this, it actually no longer fits the middle seat. So, you know, I just set the, uh, the dog in the front seat now and my wife gets to sit in the middle seat uh, for now. If she, if she drives this, she has her own Tesla though. So um, I think uh, she just prefers to drive on her own. Um, she doesn't like my music, by the way. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for now.